Hello and welcome to Sports Talk. I'm your host, Ian Goldsmith. Each episode, we cover sports stories that are circulating around the Cedar Valley. For nearly every episode throughout the year, this means capturing our beloved Cedar Falls Tigers in action. This week, we're going to try something a little bit different. Welcome to the Sturgis Falls Special Edition of Sports Talk. In this episode, we captured some unique feats of athleticism from throughout the Sturgis Celebration Weekend. This includes everything from dancing to racing to barking. Don't go away. The Sturgis Falls edition of Sports Talk starts right now. First up on this special episode is one of the most athletic competitions of the year. These athletes can run faster, jump higher, and sustain energy longer than almost any athlete I know. The only side effect to being one of these super athletes? Fur. And occasionally a lot of slobber. Here's my recap of the Hyperflight Skyhound Championship. Speed. Skill. Adrenaline. Flight! They are the, the Sky, Sky Hounds! Hounds. Ooh. Welcome, Welcome to the Hyper Sky, 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 Sky Hounds, Hounds Championship. Championship! I'm your play by play announcer, Ian Goldsmith. Let's meet our competitors. First up is owner Aaron with Big Air Bear. Bear is a black lab mix and three and a half years old. Bear is the rookie of the group, making his Sky Hounds Championship debut. Next in the lineup is owner Noel with Vinny. Unlike Bear, Vinny is the veteran of the group. He is a fox rat terrier mix 11 years old. Vinny is no stranger to the Skyhound stage and is planning to use his frisbee experience to make these other dogs seem like puppies. Third is owner Mark with Maggie. Maggie is a four-year-old Aussie. Let's hope the other dogs don't get fooled by her beauty because she is just as bold as she is beautiful. Fourth is owner Matt with Chief, a seven-year-old yellow lab. Chief is the two-time defending Skyhounds champion. You can feel the air get thinner when near Chief because you know you are in the presence of dog frisbee greatness. Chief, known for his jumping ability, puts the sky in Skyhounds. Fifth in the lineup is owner Tim with Nina, a seven-year-old chocolate lab. Nina also holds veteran status here at Skyhounds, having finished second to Chief in the last two years. Nina is known for two things on the field, consistency and running around in circles when she is excited. Nina hopes to steal the crown from Chief this year. Rounding out the lineup is owner Kirby with Daryl. Daryl is a unique three-year-old Gordon setter. Daryl's long strides and beautiful flowing fur make him fun to watch and hopefully translate to success on the field. Let's take it down to Cindy reporting live on the field. Cindy, give us a rundown of the rules here today. Um, we do two 60 second rounds where each competitor and um, dog team is is allowed to throw the frisbee and to catch as, get as many catches as possible in a one minute. The first 10 yards is no score. 20 to 30 yards, I believe it is, is one point. 30 to 40 yards is two points. 40 to 50 yards is three points, and to the other end zone is five points. And they can score an additional half a point if they are in the act of jumping and they catch the frisbee clearly with all four legs off the ground. Thank you, Cindy. Hey, it looks like we're getting ready to start the first round. First up is Big Air Bear. Bear started off strong with a couple solid catches. He had trouble with one grounder, but recovered on the next throw to complete an overall solid first round. Next up is Vinny. Vinny came out with an explosive growling behind the back start. Let's see that one again. <laughs> Vinny's veteran catching experience gives him an early lead as he never dropped a pass in the first round. Next, the beautiful Maggie takes the field with a solid first catch. She follows it by spending some time with the birds with this enormous hop. Her strong start is quickly met with trouble as she struggles to catch some difficult tosses across the field. Next up is the defending champion, Chief, who starts off with a rare dropped pass. He quickly recovers as he starts to move back into his usual form, but misses another pass later in the round. Overall, not a bad first round. 
but will it be enough to defend his title? Nina starts her first round with a dropped pass off a difficult frisbee hook, but her consistency soon takes over with a couple nice short grabs. Although she drops her final toss, she remains in good position to stay in the race. Ending the first half is Daryl. Daryl has an explosive start, catching a few grab and goes in the short field. The round goes well for Daryl until this lost frisbee blunder. He ends the round with a difficult pass. It's now halftime here at the Dog Championship, and the dogs and owners alike take a short breather before they enter back into thick competition. Vinny looks pensively across the playing field while Bear shakes off his first round jitters. Nina gives her owner a reassuring kiss as Champ is chopping at the bit to prove that he can do better in the second round. Let's take it back to Cindy on the field. Cindy, what are your thoughts on the first half? I love watching the dogs come out and do, do their thing. They, they just love to go after those frisbees and jumping and, and catching them, bringing them back. It makes the, all the dogs really happy to please their owners. Well, thank you, Cindy. Let's start the second half. The Big Air Bear bolts out of the gates like a horse at the derby with two solid catches. Things start to not seem as easy for the rookie as he has to chase some difficult passes, ending his second round. Vinny returns with his barking and sticky fingers, catching his first three passes of the round. His easy road to victory doesn't seem so sure after he finally drops his first pass of the day and ends his round with an out-of-bounds pass. Maggie struggles early in the second as she is not quite quick enough to catch up to her master's passes. She recovers with a sweet catch downfield, but narrowly misses her final pass of the day. Chief, who's now eager to prove himself, starts the second round catching with his famous hops. Look at the hang time on that dog. What really puts him over the edge is his burst of energy displayed here on his final catch. Nina starts her second round with a missed long ball. So she decides to return to her roots, going back to the short and consistent quick grabs. Thank you, come again. Well done, Nina. The final round of the day goes to Daryl, who starts with an impressive snag off the slice. However, those impressive snags were cut short with a few dropped passes throughout the round. Daryl finishes strong nevertheless. Let's see our final results. Coming in sixth place is Daryl with six points. In fifth place is Big Air Bear with six and a half points. In fourth place is Maggie with eight and a half points. In third is Nina with 13 points. In second place is the impressive veteran Vinny with 16 and a half points, which leaves the title to the now three-time defending champion, Chief, with 21 points. Let's head down to the winner's circle to catch up with our three-time defending champions. I think Chief lives for two days. This is one of them. And then the uh, Cedar Falls water park day where they opened up for the dogs, the second one. And so uh, he, he loves it. He loves coming out here. As long as I can throw him decent, I think he has a pretty good shot. No, he has tons of energy, and so anything we can do to burn some of that is good, and so walks and runs and things of that nature. So he's always been a pretty good frisbee catcher. This is a pretty pretty big deal. <laughs> yep, no, this is a lot of fun. Three-time champ. Chief does a very good job. One of these years is going to be old and slow, and so we're going to have to hang it up, but for now we're going to keep keep going. Great. And uh, if champ could say one thing, what do you think yep. he's saying right now? I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty. <laughs> Congratulations to Chief and all the dogs on a well-fought competition. Well, that event was so much fun to cover. Congratulations to all of the dogs and their owners. I'm already looking forward to next year. Speaking of fun, I remember that when I was a kid, few things were more fun than riding bicycles around town. One particular bike that made us feel pretty cool was Big Wheels. If that's true, then this next story features some of the coolest kids in town. Mike Menon has the recap of the annual Sturgis Falls Big Three Wheel Race. Ladies and gentlemen, start your engines? Nope, start those little feet up pedaling. Only at Sturgis Falls we block off a city street for a fun event like this one. Well, today at uh, Sturgis Falls we had the, the two through six year old big wheel race. A lot better turnout this year. We had multiple heats of, you know, six-year-old, multiple heats of five-year-olds. There's there a lot of kids out here, and they really did a great job. The SFC Big Three Wheel Race is put on by Europa Cycle and Ski, and it was an event that was started years ago, but just didn't bring in the talent. Then a grandma decided to bring it back fast and furious style. 
three years ago, uh, we were here with our grandson and there uh, was not a race organizer. So my daughter and I decided we wanted to bring the race back and I work at Europa Cycle in Cedar Falls and so we decided we were, Europa was going to sponsor it. So this is our second year of sponsoring it. When I was a little kid, I might have been a participant, I don't remember, and I don't know how it's going on now, it just keeps going. Unstoppable. This event is for ages two through six, and you can bring in your favorite three-wheel ride, either a tricycle or a big wheel, and how much were required. The event brought in all types of three-wheel transportation. With any competitive sport, you're gonna have your coach, your biggest fan, even your agent there trying to motivate you and get you the best sponsors. These kids knew what they were getting into and they were focused. The six-year-old started the event giving the younger kids an opportunity to see how the track was laid out and study some of those tricky corners that could easily change the leader of the pack. Girls and boys were allowed to be part of the SFC Big Three Wheel Race, and each individual made sure they were having a good time while trying to bring home a ribbon. The SFC Big Three Wheel Race looks to keep rolling into the future. And if you plan on participating in next year's race, there are a couple things to keep in mind. I encourage for next year, kids come with your own helmet that's fit and ready to go, and have your own big wheel too, so it's ready to go. Well, whether they're racing or not, kids always have a fun time at Sturgis Falls. One of the main places that kids spend their time is in the Kids Way Big Top Tent. This tent features everything from magicians to jugglers to yo-yos. We captured one of the more athletic performances from inside the Big Top, a craft known as capoeira. Matt Lang has the story. David Pratt and his colleagues are capoeira masters. I've been doing capoeira for going on eight years now, and I've been teaching capoeira maybe four, about four years out of that, half of, half of that. Although David is plenty experienced in the field of capoeira, he loves sharing his talents with others, trying to let One, them find the joy he can find two, while performing. Three, no. That is why David and his partners put on a capoeira workshop at the Sturgis Falls celebration this past week. I really, really enjoy working with kids. Um, for me, it's a natural talent to work with kids. And capoeira is the best way for me to get their energy out. Capoeira is considered a martial art, similar to karate or taekwondo. At the same time, however, capoeira is very different from those art forms, since watching people perform capoeira today could easily be described as watching them play or dance rather than fight. The one thing I want kids to get out of me is fun. Not fight, but fun. I want kids to have fun with capoeira, have fun with learning the language. David describes capoeira as both an art form and a language. During the time of slavery, North American slave drivers were taking some of their African slaves down to Brazil. The African slaves were soon working with the Brazilian slaves for many hours each day. Since they originally had no method to communicate with one another verbally, the African slaves used capoeira to build a relationship between themselves and the Brazilians. By developing that language, that combination of dialect with the music and the movement, capoeira slowly started to form itself. Capoeira became immensely popular among the slave communities in South America. 
So popular, in fact, it was even deemed illegal for a short time by the slave drivers due to their fear of the slave communities being formed because of it. Today, capoeira is obviously legal and has become a widely recognized sport around the world. The martial art incorporates music and has a variety of movements that can be easy enough for children to learn or difficult enough for even a veteran to have difficulty mastering. And we just have Capoeira Modern today and it's just a fun way, a fun way of exercise. It's a fun way to communicate with people, to build up a network of people, of friends, to just go and travel the world with and play Capoeira. It's a very, 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 very joyous time and I've been loving this, doing Capoeira forever since. Reporting for Cedar Falls Sports Talk, I'm Matt Lang. To round out our Sturgis Falls episode, we bring it around full circle back to Tiger Athletics. Here's my recap of the annual Tiger Booster Club golf outing. The friends, family, and alumni of Cedar Falls Tiger Athletic Programs gathered on the Thursday of Sturgis Falls for the 15th annual Tiger Golf Club outing, sponsored by the Tiger Booster Club. This year we have the 15th annual Tiger Booster Club golf outing. Um, it's an event that we've started years ago to raise funds for the athletic programs, both Holmes, Pete Junior High, and Cedar Falls High School. This is the uh, annual fundraiser for the uh, Booster Club. Uh, they have it every year. Uh, a lot of alumni come back, and we always do it on the Thursday before Sturgis Falls. Um, a lot of coaches, parents, fans, just uh, interested people in Tiger Athletics. At this event, held every year at Pheasant Ridge Golf Course, hosted 128 golfers as 32 teams of four. Although the day was windy, the rain stayed away, allowing the golfers to enjoy a full day at the links. This is a four-man, four-person best shot. Um, you know, they usually, um, like I said, if we have maximum, will be 36, so usually there's two foursomes on each hole. Um, you just play around. Uh, we have different competitions at each hole. We have like BP alumni, uh, longest drive, longest putt. Uh, some move-up holes where they can pay to move up, so it's a little additional fundraisers that way. So just a lot of, lot of fun activities on the course. In addition to golfing, participants partake in flag events, raffle items, and a putting contest on the practice screen, and also receive two drink tickets, a steak dinner, and cupcakes. Favorite part's probably uh, at the very end with the auction and everybody gets in, they have a nice meal at the end, uh, they get to eat, uh, just a lot of camaraderie, a lot of alumni back, you get to talk to them, the coaches are in there, um, and it's just a really good, um, you know, school-sponsored uh, activity and, and just a lot of fun for everybody involved. This annual outing is put on to raise funds for all Cedar Falls High School, Pete Junior High, and Holmes Junior High athletic programs. It's a great fundraiser for the Booster Club. Um, gets a lot of people involved and kind of kind of raises some good money for the Booster Club. This is probably the main fundraiser of the, of the year that the Booster Club does. Uh, they'll do a lot of other smaller events like the fall kickoff, uh, some other things throughout the year, but this is probably one of the biggest fundraisers for the year. Hopefully this year we'll bring in around 20, 25,000, and that's typically what we shoot for each year, and it's grown every year, and we've got some great sponsors helping us out. This year we've got a lot of great community support. Um, you know, they've got a lot of good, good things. We've got 32 teams, so uh, we have an auction afterwards that usually brings a lot of money into as well. So. Um, our goal is 25000 this year. All profits made from the Tiger Golf outing directly benefit Cedar Falls student athletes. This is really important as far as with the funds. Uh, it helps fund all the athletics, um, you know, through, throughout the year if they need something for volleyball or basketball or wrestling or football or track or anything like that. Um, you know, we've got those funds available and, and uh, Mr. Coonan and the athletic department, they kind of share those around uh, as needed. So uh, it's a very important fundraiser for the Booster Club. If we didn't have a great community sport and a great booster club like we have, we couldn't uh, do the things we do for our programs. We couldn't buy the equipment, couldn't have the uniforms that uh, keep our kids on top. A big thank you to the Tiger Booster Club for not only a fun day of golf, but for helping to keep those great Tiger athletics going strong year after year. Well, we look forward to continuing to see those strong Tiger athletics for years to come. In fact, We'll be back seeing those Tiger Athletics in our next episode. Thanks for watching the Sturgis Falls edition of Sports Talk. I'm Ian Goldsmith. I'll see you next time.